Okay, so now we'll study a game between Antal and Bauer. We'll see a French defense. So here after the main moves, white plays knight to d2, which is the Tarash variation. We know that the main difference between knight d2 and knight c3 is at the fact black can play the binaural variation with bishop b4, pinning the knight and putting some pressure on white's center. When he plays knight d2, bishop b4 is no longer possible, because then uh, white plays c3 and he wins a tempo. And by the way, he can also try e5, which is the advanced variation, and e takes d5, that would be the exchange variation. So, knight to d2. Black plays knight to c6, which is the Guimard variation. The main line goes knight up 6, and he can also try c5. Uh, this is the move I like uh, the most. When black plays with knight c6, though, it's going to be tough to play c5, and that is a key move in the French, because when we play c5, uh, we put a lot of pressure in white's center. Here, for instance, in the main line, we can see how useful c5 is and we can uh, mix c5 with f6 so let's see what happens after knight c6 white plays knight f3 uh, this is a good move if he plays something like c3 then we can take our chance to play e5 free in our position and trading a lot of pieces off in the center. I feel black is equalizing already, so knight of three is much better. Knight of six. So here white plays bishop e2. I think bishop d3 is probably a mistake in my opinion, because then we can play knight b4, that bishop b4 was a mouse slip. We can play knight b4, and then we can play uh, c5 afterwards. Even if we lose a tempo, I think white, he'll have to play bishop d3 sooner or later, and we win that tempo back. So, He has to play bishop e2 or maybe bishop b5. This makes a sense too. But uh, in some variations, even if yeah a6 bishop takes pawn takes, I like black uh, black's chances because we have the bishop pair. That position is closed, but we can try opening it by playing a5, bishop a6, maybe c5 at some point we don't have to underestimate uh, the bishop pair and c6 is not that weak so I think bishop e2 is best or maybe knight b3 so here we play bishop e7 a nice move by white playing knight f1 because he can castle anytime I mean, there's no rush. Thing is, he'll have to play rook e1, knight f1, knight e3, and knight h5. It's gonna take a big amount of moves to get there. If he plays knight f1 first, uh, feels like he wins a tempo, and then when he castles, uh, he doesn't have to waste the tempo with rook e1. And this is kind of annoying because we don't have the defender on f6. In some variations, the knight 
might be useful on e3 as well. So when he plays knight f1, we play f6. We have to create some counterplay in the center. Um, we know the e5 pawn is giving white the space advantage. So Castlin is probably too passive. F6 is better. And white has to take, otherwise uh, we win a pawn on e5. We take with the knight. That is uh, the idea, to get our defender back on f6. And white plays knight to e3. I think the move is okay. Personally, I prefer something like knight e3, because then bishop c1 is still open. And knight e3 also uh, controls the e4 square. I don't know, I, I don't see a big advantage in playing knight e3 for white. Maybe he can try playing c4 at some point. So let's see. First of all, uh, we castle, and then we'll think about a middle game plan. So, okay, this is the main position. Apart from thinking about moves, we have to figure out ideas, a plan. The first thing I see is we have a weak pawn on e6. Would love to get rid of it. I mean, if somehow we play e5, we are going to free our position. Bishop c8 is not doing great at the moment. I would consider developing the bishop, and maybe this maneuver helps. A problem is e6 won't be protected if I play bishop d7, bishop e8. So black plays bishop d6, and despite moving the bishop twice in the opening, I like the move because we have a positional threat. We know e5 is very good for us. In fact, when we play e5, we free our position and we also win the center. If, for instance, a3. Well, yeah, I think we have well, we have to consider this, but uh, you get the point. We have a decent uh, center and a nice uh, kingside attack. I feel white has to stop e5, and that is why he plays c4. And again, um, we have to think about the plan e5 is not possible yet. Um, we can try taking on c4, although the resulting position, bishop takes, it's interesting, although knight takes, I guess it's even stronger. He controls e5, he might consider taking our bishop, and the problem is we cannot uh, get rid of e6. So, I'm not considering taking on c4 yet. What happens if I play um, a waiting move like bishop d7? Apart from the tricks, let us say he takes on d5 and then he plays queen b3, uh, the annoying move, I guess, is uh, c5, because he wins a lot of space, and then we'll better forget about playing e5. We don't have any space, and he can also improve on the queen side, so... Feels like uh, this c5 
is powerful for white. And since we are not taking on c4, we'll have to play b6. Maybe uh, we don't have to calculate much. If we understand that position, we can find the right move. He plays b3. Well, this makes sense. He has to improve bishop c1. And I don't think bishop d2 looks active at all. When he plays b3, this is a real threat. He's going to win more space. And black plays bishop b7. And this is not an easy move. Honestly, I would consider bishop b7, but it doesn't look natural to me because this diagonal is closed. And even if I open it by playing d takes c4, I'm going to weaken my position. So I would also consider bishop d7. So this is the first uh, tough move we play. He plays bishop b2. And unless we play aggressive now, he's going to play knight e5. And he's going to win a lot of space. So the thing is, how to stop knight e5? Can we stop it? What happens if we move the queen or a rook? The natural move is, or the idea is to move the queen. That is what logic tells us. And then we continue with uh, rook e8 or rook d8. That is uh, the natural variation. But again, he's going to play knight e5. He's going to win space. But on the other hand, I don't see any way to stop knight e5. So black plays bishop f4. And I like this move. Because this knight e3 happens to be powerful. And even if he plays knight e5 now, our bishop on f4 is uh, still active. It's not being trapped on d6. So that is uh, the main difference. White plays uh, rook c1. If he goes knight to e5, well, I think we can just take. In a lot of variations, we can also consider taking on e3. Here we understand the difference. Uh, with having the bishop on f4 instead of d6. Suddenly we are full of threats. And rook c1... I don't know, he's just pinning his knight on e3. I understand he wants to place the rook on the c-file, but as we'll see in this game, he's not taking on d5. So that is why I think uh, rook c1 is a mistake. If he took, or if he takes on d5 at some point, then rook c1 has some sense. Uh, here as black, we continue with our aggressive approach. See how uh, suddenly in two moves, we got the initiative. Here we have a lot of tricks on the f file. Uh, I see a sacrifice on f2, then I can just have some tactics on e3. And let's not forget the bishop on b7. One day we can just take on c4, and we have some tactics on this diagonal too. And I think white is not playing the accurate moves, he's playing passive. Rook c1 it's okay, but bishop d3 is already a mistake. He has to take on d5. I mean, he just played rook c1. Maybe after c takes d5, 
he doesn't win much, but at least he has the C file open. He might have uh, something in the future. I don't know. Uh, this is just an example. Of course we have Bishop takes, but he has some tricks. That's what I mean. And it is better to have uh, some counterplay ideas rather than playing uh, passive moves. Bishop d3 doesn't achieve much because I don't think he wants to take on e4. Having the bishop pair in an open position like this is too powerful. And he plays bishop b1. Well, if he took on e4, um, this is very good for us. Not to mention, apart from the kingside ideas, like taking on e3, I would just take on a2. We win a tempo, then we go back to b4, and the pawn is a pawn. Therefore, he plays bishop b1, and this is just an awesome move. It looks um, natural too, because apart from knight e3, we want to get rid of the main defender, which is knight f3. Without knight f3, uh, his king side is hopeless. See, we are attacking on f3 in so many ways. Rook f8, bishop b7, knight e5. And he goes knight to e5. Well, taking on e5. Well, I think this is uh, close to losing. We also have some mates on e2. And if he plays anything else, like a3, we are happy to take and then we play bishop takes h2. So he tries knight e5. He's trying an active move now, but it's probably late. We take on c4, weakening our position, but we have two bishops attacking his king. If you if you're familiar with uh, mating puzzles, you're probably looking at a move like knight h3 check at some point, plus queen e5. We have a lot of ideas. He takes with the pawn. I don't see any difference if he takes with the rook. So here, let's see our knight h3 first. Unfortunately for us, he can just play knight e4, but I think queen e4 is even better. And I don't see any... Well, bishop takes e3, maybe. Okay, so knight e4. I don't see any winning variation yet. The other idea would be getting rid of knight e5 which is not attacking, but defending. And we'll have some tricks on this diagonal too. Apart from knight h3, we also have to consider knight f3, which is uh, quite natural. He cannot take. If he does, then we just play queen e5 plus uh, bishop takes f3. So king h1. And now the simple queen h4. After a couple of moves, uh, white is just going only move, only move, only move. And as we said in previous games, if your opponent is playing only moves, then you're probably in the right variation. Of course, here we have to look for 
queen takes h3 moves variations but first we win a tempo he plays queen b3 and after knight d2 uh, he can resign already he still has the defender on e3 but uh, we win by simple means uh, the first move I look at is bishop takes e2 I think that's that's winning however black plays knight f3 which is winning as well only move is he takes, bishop takes and there's no way to stop queen h1 uh, therefore white resigns here after analyzing this game it's not easy to tell where white made the big mistake I think black played strong moves like bishop d6 in the opening this bishop f4 is not um, it's not easy to find and probably white played uh, passive we know he takes d5 was a better chance a better try and bishop d3 uh, and bishop b1 is passive as well this reminds me of um, a game we saw one of the previous games uh, we analyzed it in this um, DVD white also played bishop d3 plus bishop b1 so I hope this analysis was useful I hope you could learn from it and we'll continue analyzing in the next videos thank you hi this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos first of all I hope you enjoyed um, this video if you would like to receive more free chess videos from us you can just click the subscribe button below I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course the 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess during this exclusive course from onlinechesslessons.net I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization so sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for onlinechesslessons.net and I'll see you uh, in my videos. Thank you.